I'm over it. I'm over it, okay? Just take All-Star Weekend and get the hell rid of it. Just get it out of here. I'm done with it. I'm done. I got more to say. It's the Stephen A. Smith Show. Let's go. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the latest edition of the Stephen A. Smith Show, coming at you at the very least three times a week over the digital airways of YouTube. I'm finally back right here in my beautiful new studios. By the way, appreciate all the love and support you all continue to give me. In terms of my followers, we've now continued to climb even more and more, exceeding over 563,000 subscribers and counting. Keep the love coming. You know what I always keep telling you? I'm going to keep on coming, okay? So make sure to continue and like to like and follow the show. All right, right here on YouTube. Just click the bell to get notified for all of our new content, and bam, you are in. And while you're doing that, please make sure to pick up a copy of my New York Times best-selling book, Straight Shooter, a memoir of second chances and first takes. Now in paperback, by the way. Just go to straightshooterbook.com to get yourself a copy, all right? And since I am in my studio, we'll be taking your calls a little bit later on in the show, so feel free to hit me up and get some advice at 888-727-5303. That's 888 888- SAS 5303. Now let's get right to it because I got a lot of stuff on my mind, okay? The National Basketball Association All Star Game happens every February and showcases the league's brightest stars, the players. The game itself is supposed to be a marquee event for the league and their fans. Well, Sunday's All Star Game produced a record score and another forgettable blowout as the players did not learn evidently, from last year's fiasco in Salt Lake City. The Eastern Conference blew out the West 211 to 186. Ladies and gentlemen, that's 397 points, in case you couldn't count. The East was the first team in All-Star Game history to score at least 200 points. First of all, no defense whatsoever. No pride, no competitive fervor, nothing. The greatest players in the world showed up and basically gave you a version of flag basketball. I never heard of flag basketball until now. We've heard of flag football. You know where no tackles are involved, where you're just touching one another, where it's a crime if you have bad breath and you breathe on each other. No, 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 no. That was, that's usually reserved for football. This is basketball. And what we've got, we've learned a new sport exists. It's flag basketball. It's flag basketball. Nobody touch anybody. Nobody defends. Nobody do anything. Shoot as many threes as you want. Make as many layups as you want. Have many dunks as you want. I get it. I understand that you don't want to put yourself in a position, ladies and gentlemen, where you are risking injury. I get that to some degree. I truly, truly do. And nobody is expecting, nor should they expect, the players to play as if it's a playoff game or the players to play as if it's even a regular season game. But here's my thing. Why do I see you playing harder in Summer League when you're working out of UCLA or Loyola Marymount or some other place in New York City? Why do I see you working out harder during those games in the summertime than you are for All-Star Weekend? I remember a few years back when the fourth quarter was competitive and we were raving about them going at one another because it dictated home court advantage for the winner come NBA Finals when it was East versus West. I remember that. But it's gotten to a point now where it's utterly ridiculous. And this is where the Europeans are going to take over, ladies and gentlemen. Let me give you this warning in advance. Because you see, you couldn't pull this off if you showed up in France, if you showed up in Slovenia, Czechoslovakia, or or, or Croatia, or someplace like that. They ain't having it. The pride, the patriotism, making sure that you give folks their money's worth, that's what matters. You see how crazy they are over over soccer? People got to worry about their lives if they don't give effort. Hell, when they do give effort, if the outcome ain't what the crowd wants it to be, you got to be concerned. You certainly can't feel free to walk the streets. But here in America, with these players in a league, predominantly African-American, I might add, you got guys getting paid, and they got their money, and as a result, it's diluted the importance of all-star, of the all-star games because they don't give two shits about what happens. 
You can't even compete. You can't even face up against somebody and try to defend against them. No, we can't do something like that. It's embarrassing. You can tell it in the face of Commissioner Adam Silver. You could tell it in the face of NBA personnel, some coaches, even some of the players. You heard them after the game, the way that they were talking. LeBron, Steph Curry, Damian Lillard, all speculated as to whether or not something could be done about it because they know it's a problem. They know it's a problem. It's really embarrassing. They are so lucky. Former Commissioner David Stern has passed away. God rest his soul. Oh, are they lucky. Because I'm telling you, he'd come up with something just to agitate the players and make them compete in a fashion that shows deference and respect to the viewing and paying public. I don't care if they do away with the game. I don't care if there is no All-Star game. I really don't. That's how embarrassing it is. It really, really is. But it ain't worse than what I'm about to bring up right now. Now, let me get to the dunk contest. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the last two slam dunk competitions have been won by a fellow named Matt McClung. You ever heard of that name? If you're not familiar with Mr. Mac McClung, no one will hold it against you. He plays in the G League for the Osceola Magic, to be exact, the G League for the Orlando Magic. And he just won the NBA Slam Dunk Contest for a second year in a row. A G Leaguer, yes. Now, historically, some of the best NBA dunkers of all time have participated in the dunk contest, in case you missed it. Let me go down memory lane and name just a few. The original slam dunk champion, Julius Irving, put on the original show in 1976. Later on came Michael Jordan and his iconic battles with Dominique Wilkins, of course, okay? And Jordan took a page from Dr. J and took off from the free throw line to win that battle in 1988. Let's get to 2000. Remember that show that Vince Carter put on? Remember that absolute show he put on for the All-Star crowd against a field that included fellow All-Star Tracy McGrady, by the way? We didn't see that this past weekend. I can tell you that much. And there's only one person to blame for the lack of high-profile players participating in the dunk contest. You damn right. His name is LeBron James. Now, so for everybody going to get all sensitive and stuff like that, let me be very, very clear. Let's throw out the particulars. Let's throw out the specifics because we all know that we got to make sure that we honor the greatness of King James, right? He's on the Mount Rushmore, four-time champion, four-time league MVP, went to like nine straight NBA finals, ten straight NBA finals for crying out loud. This is what he's done in his career. He's the leading scorer in NBA history. No one has scored more points. He just recently surpassed Kareem Abdul-Jabbar last season. We get all of that about LeBron James. He's 39 years of age in his 21st season. We've never seen somebody in their 21st season averaging 25 a game looking the way that LeBron James is looking, clearly on the Mount Rushmore. And we will miss him when he is gone. And we appreciate LeBron James because he is somebody that has been the marquee and has thoroughly and fully embraced it and has handled himself with pristine class, without question. But that doesn't negate the one flaw in his entire career that's more conspicuous than anything else, and that is his absence from the slam dunk contest. You see, whether it's David Thompson, whether it's a Connie Hawkins, whether it's a Dr. J. Julius Irvin, whether it's a, even Craig Miner, for crying out loud, when people were calling him Baby Jordan, whether it was a Michael Jordan, whether it was a Dominique Wilkins, the list went on and on and on throughout the years. Kobe Bryant participated in events. Carter, Tracy McGrady, the list went on and on and on. As most recently, Aaron Gordon and Zach Levine put on a show for the ages. It was spectacular. I'm talking about Skywalkers. Skywalkers. By the way, let me not forget Kenny Skywalker, who used to play for the New York Knicks that entered the slam dunk contest years ago. Skywalkers. Those marvelous, spectacular athletes who play above the rim. Every single one of them participated in the slam dunk contest until LeBron James came along and decided he didn't want to be a part of it. He didn't mind being on layup lines pregames and doing all these spectacular dunks to put people on notice that he could participate in the slam dunk contest and he could win the slam dunk contest and get everybody oohing and on over him and stuff like that. We did that. We got all of that. 
But he's never chose to participate in the slam dunk contest. And here's what it meant. When you have a superstar of his magnitude that sat up there and said, hey, I'm not really interested in participating in competing in a slam dunk contest, it was okay for everybody to follow suit. Remember what John Morant said last year? He didn't care too much about the slam dunk contest. He'll compete, if, uh, you know, for it when he wants to, if he ever wants to. That came because you had guys like LeBron James who started all of this, this level of indifference and apathy towards participating in the slam dunk contest. When you see it go away, when you see it evaporate and disappear, when you see the growing public get tired of the nonsense that they put before us, then you'll understand who to point the finger at. It's the one thing that deserves to be pointed right at LeBron James. He is the one that did all of this. Mac McClung, you deserve all the props in the world. You legitimately won that. Jalen Brown, you deserve props for participating in the slam dunk contest. Ain't nobody going to throw shade on you for participating in it. But for LeBron James to skip it, you made it okay for everybody else to skip it. Where was Anthony Edwards? He's a skywalker. He's dunking on people all the time. How come he didn't participate in the slam dunk contest? Where the hell was he? You see all of these cats that can jump out the gym and jump on, and, and, and dunk on folks? Where they at? Why haven't they participated in it? Because they don't care which is why I have an idea. And I've said this publicly before, but I'm going to reiterate it again because I want y'all to hear this in detail. And I'll put some of my own money up if that's what it takes. It ain't going to be me alone. I need help now. I ain't got that much paper. But I'm happy. And I've spoken to Adam Silver about this. I've spoken to other NBA officials about it. And I will continue to implore and the push for this idea that I first presented on First Take on ESPN every weekday morning from 10 a.m. to 12 noon. I presented this two years ago to Kendrick Perkins. Let's have a national dunk contest. National slam dunk competition. City to city, state to state, throughout this union, you have some of the best dunkers descend upon one area so they can be evaluated for their slam dunking prowess. We pick the best from each city. And then after that, you cut it down somehow, some way to a top 10. And the top 10 dunkers get all expenses paid trip to All-Star Weekend. The first prize winner, a million dollars. Runner up, $500,000. Third place, $100,000. Now, if I'm going to be quite blunt about this, we got people acting up in the streets throughout America for far less than that amount of cash. So imagine what they would do if all you got to do is win a slam dunk contest in order to get that kind of paper in your pocket. Think about how competitive they will be for it. Think about the level of competition we'll witness, the quality of the slam dunks we'll see. Do that, and here's how you keep NBA All-Stars involved. If you're LeBron James and you're an All-Star, I'm sponsoring that guy. If you're Steph Curry and you're an All-Star, I'm sponsoring that guy. If you're an Anthony Edwards, if you're Carl Anthony Towns, if you're Jalen Brunson, if you're Giannis Antetokounmpo, if you're Nikola Jokic, you talk about the top 10 vote getters the top 10 vote getters, each of them represent one of them, one of the guys participating in the slam dunk contest. And they sponsor them. This is my guy. This is who I'm coaching. This is who I'm rooting for. And that's how they can participate rather than putting themselves through the arduous physical task of having the slam dunk themselves. And as a result, everybody's happy. You got a spotlight put on the sport of basketball. You got player involvement, which are the all-stars. And you got cats from the streets that are competing. And since they don't play in the NBA and they don't have to worry about an 82-game schedule and they don't have to worry about getting injured and they don't have to worry about taking risks, they're going to go all out. And we're going to see an elevated level of quality. If a G-leaguer can participate in the slam dunk contest, certainly somebody else can too. Because evidently, you don't have to be an NBA player to participate. Matt McClung has played a grand total of four NBA games. That's it. He's in the G League. 
The hell with it, y'all. We got players from Europe. We got players from America. We got players from different continents. How come we can't get players from the streets of America? Let them do it. That is my idea. Because if you're not going to do that, eradicate the slam dunk contest. I don't want to see people in Timberlands. I don't want to see 14 Miss Dunks. I don't want to see all of this nonsense. I don't want to see the same old, same old jumping over somebody. I don't want to see that no more. I need creativity. Give it to me. I can say this, however. There is something that was good about All-Star Weekend. Wasn't the All-Star Game. Damn sure it wasn't the slam dunk contest. Both of them need to go as presently constructed. But we can't say the same about the three-point shooting contest. Major props to Damian Lillard for winning back-to-back three-point shooting contests. But the highlight of the entire weekend was Sabrina Ionescu versus Steph Curry. Now, Steph Curry might be considered the greatest shooter in basketball history, but Sabrina certainly made him prove it Saturday night as part of the NBA All-Star Weekend, okay? The Golden State Warriors guard edged the New York Liberty guard 29-26 in an NBA versus WNBA three-point shooting contest, the first of its kind. Ionescu opened by making seven straight shots before finishing with a total score of 26, which happened to be to tie the highest score by any NBA player in the three-point contest held earlier Saturday night and won, obviously, by Milwaukee Bucks star Damian Lillard. But in the end, Steph Curry, the greatest shooter God has ever created, eclipsed that all with 29. Steph Curry shows up. He took it seriously, y'all. He knew that Sabrina was no joke. He also knew he didn't want to lose to her. Period. And the bottom line is he showed up and he showed out. He answered the call after she scored her 26. He needed to come on strong and make sure he did his thing. And he ended strong as well. He is the greatest shooter man has ever seen. It's that simple. And had he lost to her, it would not have been any shame in it. She was allowed to shoot a WNBA ball because that's what she shoots regularly as opposed to a regular basketball, but she shot from the same distance. I don't want to hear all of this noise, people aiming towards Kenny Smith talking about he was wrong to say she should have been allowed to shoot from the WNBA range, him and Reggie Miller going back and forth, Reggie Miller saying shoot and shoot, all of that other stuff. Stop trying to make it into something that's not. Kenny Smith is entitled to his opinion. Reggie Miller is entitled to his. Kenny Smith wasn't being disrespectful towards her. But in the end, what it comes down to is this. She shot from NBA range, and she still did better than most. Remember, four people in the NBA three-point shooting contest had the 26. She had 26 as well. She just ran up against the greatest ever. And by the way, this should continue. They should have this event every All-Star weekend. Steph Curry didn't disappoint. Sabrina Ionescu did not disappoint. They were marquees and showed up and acted like marquees and treated it with the seriousness that it deserved. They answered the call the way marquees are supposed to answer the calls. Everybody can learn something from them. Last item real quick. The Nets, as in the Brooklyn Nets, have fired Jacques Vaughn as its head coach just a few hours ago. Um, the Brooklyn Nets fired him on Monday morning. Team announced the former NBA guard was in his second season as the coach of the Nets, who are now 21 and 33 and sit in 11th place in the East, just a game out of the play in tournament. The Nets ended a disappointing first half of the season with a 50 point loss in Boston in their final game before the All Star break. In two plus seasons as Nets coach, Jacques Vaughn was 71 and 68 in the regular season, but 0 and 8 in the playoffs, getting swept twice. He replaced Steve Nash a season ago before going 43 and 32 and getting swept in the first round of the Eastern Conference playoffs. Listen, I don't like the fact that he was fired. I understand that Sean Marks and them had to do what they had to do. Didn't have the pulse of the players. Was nose diving. Um, we get all of that. My problem is, is that he inherits a mess because by the time he took over for Steve Nash, James Harden was on his way there, but looking to get out the second he could because he really wanted to be with Daryl Morey. Kyrie Irving was causing all types of problems at that particular moment in time. Some understandable, some self-inflicted. And Kevin Durant was by his lonesome. And so when I look at it from that perspective, it does have me lamenting the status of Jacques Vaughn from this perspective. What if he had gotten a job originally? When Kyrie was there and Kevin Durant was out and then Kevin Durant was supposed to be um, coming back, which he ultimately did. 
What if Jacques Vaughn was the one coaching the team when Kevin Durant, size 13, should have been a 12 and a half, so his foot would have been behind the three-point line, and he would have hit that three in a game seven that ended up being a two, and they ended up losing that game? What if Kyrie Irving hadn't hurt his ankle um, and ultimately watches Kevin Durant drop 49? in a game five that was a must win for the Brooklyn Nets at that particular moment. What if that had happened? I'm looking at the fact that Steve Nash, who never coached on any level a day in his life, got an opportunity to have that head coaching job. But Jacques Vaughn got it when nothing but chaos reigned. I feel sad that he lost his job. I understand that Sean Marks and him felt that the timing was right to do what they needed to do. I just wish that Jacques Vaughn was given a better hand initially in getting the job instead of being called upon to clean up a mess that couldn't be cleaned up. Next up, you know him as the Jet. You also know him as an Emmy Award winning contributor to the great NBA show that's inside the NBA on TNT. It ain't Charles Barkley I'm talking about. It ain't Shaquille O'Neal I'm talking about. It's not even Ernie Johnson I'm talking about. I'm talking about my brother, from Queens, New York, the Jet himself, Kenny Smith. He's in the house. Back next with my brother in a minute. Everyone knows I demand excellence, and I'm in it to win it. So that's why I've teamed up with Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app, to help turn my sports knowledge into some big time money. Prize Picks is a daily fantasy app where you simply choose two or more of your favorite players, pick more or less on their projected stats, and then submit your entry in less time than it'll take Steph Curry to dribble up the court and hit a long-range game-winning three. So every basket, rebound, and assist gets bigger each week. Download the Prize Pick app today and join a community of more than 3 million members. And if you do, Prize Picks will match your first time deposit of up to $100. Yeah, that's right. You heard me. Go to prizepicks.com right now and use code SAS. My initials, of course, in case you didn't figure that out. Just use promo code SAS on Prize Picks to receive a first deposit match of up to $100 and then let the games begin. Prize Picks, pick more, pick less. It's that easy. My next guest is a two-time NBA champion with the Houston Rockets and co-host the Emmy Award winning Inside the NBA on TNT. He's from Queens. Queens is in the building. Welcome to the show, my brother, the one and only Kenny the Jet Smith. Welcome to the Stephen A. Smith Show, my brother. What's going on, man? How you doing? Man, it looks great over there. It looks great. Well, you know, it looks you, great. You're looking home. big time right now. And I don't know. I don't know if I'm ready for you now. <laughs> listen, listen, it's my home, so that means it's your home. It's good to see you. Got a lot of stuff that I want to get into with you. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule because I know you was traveling back from NBA All-Star Weekend. First things yes. first, you, Kenny Smith, you're in the news. Yeah, 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 yeah. You and Reggie, you know, button heads friendly, albeit, about Sabrina UNESCO and her participating in the three point shooting contest. You didn't have a problem with her shooting the WNBA ball, but you wanted her to shoot from WNBA range, et cetera, et cetera. Don't know the specificity of everything. Give us the specifics. What is your thoughts about everything everybody is saying? Yeah, I, I think it's much ado about nothing, Stephen, uh, honestly. Um, most people who know basketball understood what I was talking about. Actually, I was advocating for her more than anything else because basketball is all is muscle memory. Right. So he practices from one range. She practiced from the other. There's even a study, I think, with somebody throwing darts, the guy with those darts. Okay. And if you move him out one step, his accuracy changes dramatically. Mm. But the funny thing about it, if you move him in one step, its accuracy changes because you take so many shots from the exact same thing. So I'm like, why is he getting the, the advantage mm. to shoot at his line? That's mm. an advantage. It does, it's not gender. It's not genetic. It's an advantage. It's a muscle shooting. It's only muscle memory. And so that's what kind of, I don't know, people who don't, you know, actually play the sport mm. don't understand. It's all muscle memory. But the second part, I think, well, I think when Reggie like was joking about about oh, so she could play with dolls because it was a comment I think that Sabrina when she was younger right. that someone said you should play dolls and stop. My thought I have daughters, so my thought when I first heard that I was like, what's wrong with that? You mm. should play with dolls and you could do sports. So I actually said it right. like 
used to play with dolls, and I screamed my daughter's names out. London, Kayla, you can play with dolls. But see, most people just don't check the tape. They want to just check the bait. You right. know what I mean? And by the so way, they want to have bait. My, my history and track record is, is speak for itself. Well, please, but please. I think they, in this culture, mm -hmm. people, except for you, mm -hmm. I got to give it to you. That's why you get in trouble a lot of times. Now, you make some stuff that I'm, I cringe too. But <laughs> you check the tape. Right. And you know, wait, what did he actually say? So if you check the tape, I said, what's wrong with her playing with dolls? Right. Because that's another stereotype that, oh, she can only, she can't play doll with dolls and be in sports. It doesn't really make sense. Well, listen, listen, everybody knows that Kenny Smith, for, despite your impeccable credentials as a two-time champion, coming from the University of North Carolina, coming from Queens and Archbishop Malloy, my big brother for years and years and years, despite the great level of credibility you have, the other thing you have over me is you're an incredibly nice guy. You know me. I'd have just told people to kiss off. You know how I am. That, that would have been well, me. Well, you know what, though, Stephen, this is the first time I addressed it because I, I know what I said. Right. I knew, I knew exactly what I said. Right. I knew why I said it. Right. It was a basketball reference about working out. As right. a as a col if, if there was a college guy who was the greatest college shooter this year, it would have been an unfair advantage for him. Not an unfair, let's right. say a slight edge. Right. The shooters do shoot. Like right. but it is a slight edge because when I was in college, I never practiced from the NBA run. Never. Yeah, right. I just never did it because there's no reason because my muscle memory needs to be at the college line. Mm. So Steph Curry had a slight advantage. Right. And and why should he have a slight advantage? He is the greatest shooter in the world. So that was the whole Here's what, play that it was and a lot of it was in jest. Obviously, right. you having a WNBA player right. uh play against right. um Steph. I actually even said in the telecast, and I believe it still, they should have four WNBA and four NBA. Yeah, I heard you. Yeah, so I like it. I, 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 that's when I was like, I was clueless to why but people thought that me, I didn't want, <laughs> I didn't want equality. In the the, 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 because they're looking for a reason to hate, could create headlines so they can make some money getting clicks instead of getting a real job. But that's a different subject for another day. Kenny Smith, I will say this though, the fact that she did score 26 at the disadvantage that you highlighted so eloquently just now. Damn, what does it say about her against any other NBA player not named Steph Curry? Well, no, it just says shooters do shoot, though. Right. And we, we do that. She can make the adjustment. Right. Steph could have made the adjustment moving in. Mm. However, your muscle memory is at one line. That's all it is. Mm. It's just a better, you have more of a chance of doing what you do. The same way, you know, she shot with her ball. Right. If you gave Steph the, the women's basketball, after about two or three minute shots, he could adjust to shooting with a women's basketball. Right. However... He shot with his ball. It's just a slight adjustment. It just gives you a slight edge, mm. and that's all it is. And I, but it, I think that the whole All Star Weekend is starting to think about being revamped. Right. And that's why we're seeing all of this. Well, I'm glad you brought that up because when I think about All-Star Week, and I'm not going to lie to you, I think about Kenny Smith because you hype it up better than anybody as far as it's I'm concerned. It's over, ladies uh, It's <laughs> over. It's over. It's over. Oh, trust me, especially when you talk about Vince Carter. I remember that call. But I'm going to ask you this. I know how I feel and how disgusted I am with watching the actual competition, not the three-point shot, because I know that. The three-point contest is great. The slam dunk contest... There's been, there's, been a, there's been slippage. The level of competitive fervor for the All-Star game, there's been slippage. And I've gotten upset about it because, Kev, because, Kenny, I look at these guys on the summer, UCLA, Loyola, Marymount, wherever else they practice, they seem to give more effort then than they do at the actual game. What are your thoughts about that? Well, I think for, for both, more importantly, I think the dunk contest, when Zion Williamson got hurt, I think, and you know, and he never participated yet. That hurt the dunk contest because Aaron Gordon and Levine were carrying the torch for a while, and now Zion was the next guy. Like I know Zion Williamson. I don't know him well, but I I would imagine that dude would have been in a dunk contest. He would have showed the world that he's the best dunker maybe that ever lived when he was healthy. So I think we had a cyclical down, and. A lot of the stars don't go in it because, to be honest, Stephen, it's like the emperor with no clothes on. It's the only event where if you're do not doing it well, the world makes fun of you. Mm. You know, the three-point contest, you're always going to hit some shots. But 
the three the dunk contest, you can miss three dunks and no one and, and the whole world makes fun of you. So you're the emperor with no clothes. And I think some of our best players shy away from that competitiveness. Um the game itself definitely has to be revamped. Um I just think, you know, for me, I thought when they had the one year when they had you play to a certain number, that last five minutes got so competitive. So just make it straight 150 points. Winner, halftime is 75, and then we play to 150. Mm. Because right now, they're not playing for a goal. They're just letting each other score. And that's not what – I don't think that makes it great. We want to see the 24 best players mm -hmm. at least put up resistance against each other like a glorified pickup game. Am I wrong? Because my big brother from Queens always checks me. This is why I'm brilliant, because I know I'm not. I listen to people like yourself that help guide me, as you have done for decades. I have sat back and said, yo, all of this stuff, the criticism, I could point to LeBron from years ago not wanting to shoot free throws or whatever the case may be. But this man is on the Mount Rushmore basketball. He's one of the greatest of all time, one of the greatest ambassadors of the game as well. Nothing but mad respect and adulation for him. But when it comes to the slam dunk contest, I sort of hold him accountable, Kenny, because every superstar that played athletically and above the rim prior to him participated. He never has. And as a result, other stars have followed suit since him and have passed on participating. Am I wrong in taking that position against LeBron James when it comes to the slam dunk contest? I don't think you're wrong in taking the position. If you're giving it solely to him, then yes. But he is a participant of that, without question. Like, if he would have participated in a dunk contest, then the guys who are chasing him, like the guys who chased, chased Michael and, and, and Dominique and all of those guys, yeah. they would have done it. He, he, is, he does have to take a little bit of yeah. that blame for that. But then we did have Gordon, and then we did have Levine. But, again, those guys have never been all-stars, honestly. Right. They've never been perennial all-stars. Like guys that have been in the NBA All Star game ten to fifteen years, like Michael, Dominique, Vince Carter, and those guys that preceded them. So he does take a little bit of it. I wouldn't say solely. Not you solely. You still can make your own decision, but he has a part in it for sure. I definitely didn't say solely, but I said he instigated it because it wasn't until him that the stars who followed passed on it. Now that brings me to Anthony Edwards, the Skywalker that he is. I, I love his personality. I love what he brings to the game. He didn't participate. I thought he missed an opportunity because I thought when he came in there shooting left-handed and joking around, wait a minute, this is All-Stars. You're surrounded by All-Stars. This is your opportunity to claim, yo, there's a new era coming, and I'm a part of it, and y'all better watch out for me. And I thought he sort of passed on that opportunity to some degree. How do you feel about that? I 100% I, I agree. I think Anthony Edwards is the future of the league, and, you know, he's one of the guys and I just remember, and when you said that, as you were saying it, I was thinking of what one summer I was at North Carolina and we were talking about the dunk contest yeah. for Michael. And he says, well, I, I, I'm, I'm doing a dunk contest to let them know that I'm the best at everything. Mm. Everything. Right. He's like, there's not going to be a doubt. I'm the best at everything. He even said, I'm, and, and at this point he hadn't done it but he didn't right. do well. But he said, I'm going to enter the three-point contest one day. Oh, Lord. And he, and he actually did it. Wow. So he wanted to show the world that he was the best at everything. And, and that's why you play the game, I, you know, individually and as a team oriented. Uh, if I had the skills and, and that can possess that, I always tried to show that I could be, I'm one of the best at it. For me, that's just how I was brought up. I actually participated in dunk contests in the three-point in the same night. Yeah. The same night. Steve. That's right. Yes, you did. Like, like, so I was like, I want to show people I can do these things. And I also want to validate myself and to my peers that I might be better than you at it. Mm. You know, I'm going to go a step further because one of the things that I do, I, I, I talk about this constantly. You know, it's not just you. Remember, me covering the game. I play for Big House Gains, 
John, the late John B. McClendon used to come to practices, and obviously this is a man that invented the fast break, and not only that, obviously was a mentor to so many African-American coaches, et cetera, et cetera. Then I come into the journalism industry, I cover John Cheney, and then after that, I'm covering Larry Brown. That takes, that's added on top of what I learned from you and what I learned from so many others. And then I look at Hall of Famers, because those are the ones that's texting me all the damn time. You understand what I'm saying? Make sure you hold them accountable. Make sure you would do to them what you did to us or whatever. This generation of players sort of have an attitude about a lot of things because they don't want to be held accountable, not realizing that it's players from yesteryear who paved the way for them, who is saying to the media, excuse me, the standard doesn't change. Do you believe the standard should change? That we should take into account what we're looking at from a societal perspective in this day and age, how things are received because of the advent of social media and beyond, and say it's different, so we should measure and judge differently, or do you feel like the standard should always be the standard? Well, I think the standard is always the standard. I think we also got we have to take into account that when there is an era of people who have a voice that aren't experts, and so or aren't even. I wouldn't even say participants in the game. Right. So they don't they don't watch the game or they don't as I started with the well, at the whole segment, they don't check the tape. Right. You know, my whole thing is not to look at I think as an analyst why I lasted to 21, I never look at things face value. Right. I don't look at I don't look at it as face value. So I'm never going to react to something face value. Mm -hmm. And so what happens is the face value people can overwhelm the people who are understanding of the science of the game and i think that scares players at times to participate to to to, to compete in 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 not a uh, a competitive form like an all-star weekend a dunk contest or even a skills challenge and say i'm gonna shoot left-handed as well because we have a we have people who have voices which is fair yeah but we they have voices that but they don't check the tape and they don't even understand the science of why things happen. Mm. Kenny, when I gave this idea, I couldn't wait to throw this by you because if anybody, if anybody is qualified to judge an issue, here's my idea for the new slam dunk contest. I took it to Adam. Okay. I took it to Adam and I was saving it for these airways. Even though you and I talk all the time, I said I'm going to wait for the airways to bring it to you. Kenny, okay. I am an endorser. Now, I ain't got all the damn money, so I'm going to need help. But I'm willing to put some money up to make this happen. We have a nationwide slam dunk contest throughout the states of Chicago, New York, L.A., and every place in between. And we have a nationwide contest. And ultimately, we come to a conclusion of the top 10 slam dunkers out there. Give them an all-expenses-paid trip to the NBA All-Star Weekend. You take the, the, the top prize is a million. The consolation prize is 500000 Third place is 100000 Now, we know we live in a society where people get themselves in trouble for a hell of a lot less. Imagine what that kind of money is going to do for a lot of people, okay? You're talking about Big Bucks' top three prizes for the NBA slam dunk champion. And the players can participate, the NBA All-Stars, by the top ten stars in terms of votes received, literally sponsoring who they believe will win the slam dunk contest. That will be their involvement, but you're not asking them to dunk. You're asking others who weren't good enough, talented enough, focused enough, disciplined enough, or whatever it is, to participate in the slam dunk contest. You pay, take the creme de la creme. It could be the top five, it could be the top ten. But you bring them to All-Star Weekend with that first, second, and third place prize with an NBA player picking one to sponsor on their behalf saying, I believe this person is going to do it. LeBron, I'm got I got this guy, Steph, I got this guy, Giannis, I got this guy, etc. And you let them engage in the slam dunk contest because if you got a G-leaguer that's a back-to-back -back champion in Mac McClung, you certainly can justify going throughout the streets of America, sponsored and endorsed by the NBA, by people like yourself and me to bring the top dunkers to All-Star Weekend. What are your thoughts? And if you saw the G, if you saw the G League dunk contest with, uh, I think it's Cheryl Sue's son, wow. uh, one. I believe it was like his dunks was incredible. Yeah. So for me, that's a hell of an idea. First of all, thank you. But that, but why do we have to get to the point where 
the NBA contest, dunk contest can't be NBA guys. Because they don't want it. Like, be, like, you know what I mean? That's that. There's still something root, rudimentally not great to me in that sense that right. we can't convince our NBA guys to participate in NBA All-Star Weekend when you have the fans of the fans and the stars of the stars in a line never in a building. Hey, Stephen, even in the Grammys, I don't think you have that many stars. That's right. As you, as you have at NBA All-Star Weekend from yeah. all from football, basketball, Everywhere. baseball, music. Like, you don't have that anywhere else except for the Super Bowl. That's yeah. the only place that's comparison. And you cannot get the best players who are supposedly the best athletes in the world to do the best. It's an indictment. I love your idea as a separate entity. Right. I would still want to see the best. I want to see Ant, man. I want to see him in a dunk But I've concert. given up, Kenny. What I'm saying is I've given, I've given up on them wanting to you participate. I'm saying I them wanting to participate. Well, oh, come on, Kenny. See, that's what me and you. Come on, man. Ant-Man is listening. And, and he's going to come into the dunk I think he might. I think he might. But who's going to show up against him, Kenny? That's the but problem. If put, but even if, if Jalen Brown was your fourth best dunker, you still have names that are so recognizable. That's everyone's gonna tune in. I believe your idea. I would like to have that on All Star Friday night. Okay. I but like we don't need All Star Friday night being better than All Star Saturday night. That's then the problem. We'll move it over. <laughs> That's the problem. <laughs> then we'll move it over. Then we'll move it over. But I'd like to see that on All Star Friday night for sure. I'd like to see the, those all of those guys because they are professional dunkers now. That's right. That, that's all they do. That's all they do. And all of them, you know, we had a show called Dunk Kings. All of those guys, it was great. They are unbelievable. They try things that no one else would ever tr even try as an NBA player. Mm. However, I want to see the best in the world be the best in the world. You tell me you're the best NBA player, let me see if you're the best dunker. I totally you agree with game. you. If they I want to see that too. I totally agree with you if they want to participate. The problem is they don't. So we got to find a resolution to say the hell with you. Since you don't want to give the fans what they want to see, we going to give yeah. you, we going to bring you some people who are going to give the fans what they want to see. That's that, where I'm that's at That's agreeable. That I, we're agreeing but I'm just hopeful still. Yeah, you're still hopeful. You said you're not as cynical as me. Before I let you get on out of here, just a few more questions. Number one, Jason Tatum, I got starting the second half. He's my leading candidate for league MVP honors. He's the best player on the best team in the NBA. That's how I feel about it. Where are you on that? At, the right, most right winning now. is he and Tatum are the most winning in duo in, in the NBA in the last five years, I believe. Right. So he, he's the one guy who individually doesn't get the accolades, and they always say he's coming up short. Without Joel, Joel Embiid, and without Denver really Making noise. separating themselves right. in the West, uh, I, I, I would have to agree with you. He is the odds-on favorite. He and Ant-Man, honestly, yes, are like neck and neck, in my estimation, as MVPs of the league. Can't forget Shea Gilgis Alexander either. I can't forget oh, him Shea, in that yeah, conference. You're right. You're right. I, 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 Shay, I apologize. You 100% right. have done your thing right. this year. And, 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 and I think those are the three. And I would say Joker is three mm -hmm. right now, unless they make an incredible, make right. a good run down the second half of the season. By the way, the power of your of your little brother, Stephen A. here. Tatum was 50 to 1 odds for league MVP last Wednesday. I spoke out on his behalf. Today, he's 25 to 1. From 50 to 1 to 25 to 1. In you know Vegas. Why? Vegas odds. You know why? Why? Not the power of you. It's you check the tape, brother. I'm going to keep going. I you check, the, check tape. the tape. Because I've seen you say I've seen you stick to points, and I've seen you come back and go, you could go crazy and go, you know what? I was wrong. Yeah. Because you got to check the tape. That's right. Check the tape. No question. No question. In the Eastern Conference right now, don't like the way Milwaukee's looking, and B's not on Philly. I'm not worried about my New York Knicks. I'm kind of feeling it right now. I'm kind of feeling the New York Knicks going to the conference finals. The way If Mitchell Robinson, Julius Randle, and OG Ananobi all come back before the playoffs healthy and ready to go, I like our chances in New York City. But I ain't picking nobody over Boston in the East. Where are you? I said the Eastern Cup uh, last week. I said the Eastern Conference Finals will be the New York Knicks and the Boston Celtics. Yeah. Those are the best two teams. They're playing the best. They're playing with the most purpose. And then when the guys come back, they're already they have their system in place. Mm -hmm. Where I think when you're playing without Joel Embiid, you have to play differently. That's right. The New York Knicks are not playing differently. The Boston Celtics are not playing differently 
they're playing the way they got to play when even when guys are coming in and out. Right. I think that will dictate Milwaukee Bucks, new coach, new system. They're playing differently. Mm -hmm. The Knicks and the Celtics, they're like, no, this is us. Right. You're going to have to beat us. Right. And this is the first year that I can come out of the 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 webs and go, yes, I am a New Yorker too. That's right. <laughs> you know, you know, you, you know, you know, that I, was my first I, love. I, I, I that love was my first I love. love the fact that Bogdanovich and Burks is there too, because I think they're gonna do big things for the Knicks. But I gotta I gotta uh, Mia Copa here. I, I got on you big time. I texted you immediately last year when you picked Miami against the Knicks and broke my heart. I was like, no, no, no. But you were I right. Was right though. You were right, you were right. I was wrong. You tried to school your little bro. I I dropped the ball, then you you, you checked me and you were right, damn it. That's the way it is. West. You know what's the difference though this year? What's up? What's up? At, at the beginning of the year, I made a comment. I said, I don't know if the Knicks could win the Eastern Conference or be in it because they always walk on the floor and having the second best player. Right. They, and I was like, you play Milwaukee, they got the second best. You play Philadelphia, True. they had the second best. Play Boston. True. But Brunson has narrowed the gap yes, so he has. much to being the second. Right. You might be the best player, but, but I'm right not there. far behind you. He's right there. And so. Now I have talented guys behind me, which so like surpasses what you might have. Mm -hmm. So now that's the difference is Jalen Brunson. We talk about MVP candidate. Yes. He's in the top he's there. five. He's there. He's in the top five of being there. He's just short in the gap. Mm -hmm. Maybe he's not in B. Mm -hmm. Maybe he's not Giannis. Right. But when he plays, he makes winning plays that separates right. the gap. Out west, we see Minnesota. They got the size to go up against Denver and Gobert and Cat. And Anthony Edwards has elevated his play. And obviously, I think it's infused something, some of that dog in Minnesota that they needed. And we're going to be interested to see what they do there. Oklahoma City, a little bit too young, but Shea Gilgis, Jalen Williams, and those brothers could play. Got to give them some love. But it's all about Denver out west, at least we thought. And then we saw the Clippers come on strong. And I'm looking at it like this, Kenny. With James Harden having not missed a game, playing all 48, all 49 games since he's arrived in Los Angeles, Russell Westbrook infuses some stuff off the bench, Norman Powell can ball, and Kawhi and Paul George if they're healthy. I'm looking at the Los Angeles Clippers. Could you imagine, Kenny, if the Los Angeles Clippers end up winning the West their last season at the Crypto.com arena before they moving into Inglewood? This is unbelievable stuff that could happen for them. How legit are the Clippers to you, or is the West about Denver? The Clippers have always been legit, but they've never been able to stay healthy. And not wait till they, we say Kawhi, because he is the most unique player. It's funny because when he gets hurt and comes back, it's like he's never been hurt. Right. Like most guys take some time to get back. He kind of just jumps right back in it. He is the the difference maker. He's still in his prime uh, in terms of being a, a dominant player. So he separates everything. And you add what you just said, all of those players. The Clippers actually, and, and my favorite coach in the NBA is Tyrone Lue. No doubt. Because if you think about Tyrone Lue, you've never said this about him. Oh, his, team's, his team underachieved. Right. Never. At no point. You say they lost where they're supposed to lose. Right. Or they overachieved. Mm -hmm. They've never got to a point where you say his teams have underachieved. And that's what makes him, to me, a great coach. And um, Clippers are – the West is just wide open, but the Clippers are still, I think, even surpass Denver. Wow. Last question for you. What's been going on with you? I know you wrote a book. I know you got your camps coming on out, out every, every damn summer for crying out loud. What you got on your agenda? Because you always got something up your sleeve, man. Man, this, is, this summer, you know, I'm, I'm doing a lot of, lot of fun things. Obviously, like you said, the book Talk of Champions has been out. Uh, and uh, doing really well. Went, we went number one for uh, documentary, all, wow. I mean, not documentary, but autobiographies, okay. whatever it was. You know, it, it's just a, a great tell-all book about everything I learned from the great people I was around, from Dean Smith to Michael Jordan to Bill Russell to, man, uh, David Kohler, one from the Kohler family, my guy, friend Guy Oseri, all these great people I didn't realize were in my life. I just wrote stories of what they I learned from them. Mm -hmm. And I just want to give it out. So that's that's kind of like I'm still riding that wave. In basketball, you know, I do every level. From pros, I'll do the final four. 
and then I'll go to AU. I have an AU EYBL team, mm -hmm. and I'll be doing e summer. So you'll see me everywhere. Yeah. If it's basketball, it's me, Stephen. There you we go. Never, it never stops. Well, you keep teaching me. I always appreciate you. And I owe you an apology right here over the digital airways because I was supposed to come to your spot Friday night, and I bust my ass. I don't know if you heard the story. I was no, living I on the basketball. You. I was I on the basketball you. court. I, I was on the basketball court. I, I bust my ass. But then you made the three afterwards. I thought your ankle was all right. Yes. And then I went but. back. And then I went back to the room and the damn thing swelled up. They had to send the NBA doctors to see me and everything. I had to go to the hospital for x-rays. You know what it was? Really, it was your OLD muscle. Uh, really? You're really? old. <laughs> so that means that means it's over. Brother. That means it's over. Old. It's over, Kenny. That's, that's, I gotta give it up. I gotta that's give it the up. First sign of being old, brother. <laughs> when you fall and you get, you don't even know it. That's when you. I got up, up, man. I was fine, and then the next thing I know, I'm like, damn. All of a sudden, yeah, like yeah, an hour right. too late, that's, man. It swelled next up. Year, next year we have the big event. You know, I do it for ERN Education Reform now. So you come next year, and and uh, we had D Nice. I have performances. Yep. I've had everything, everybody you can imagine. Every rapper, you know how to every throw a party. dancer, every singer, they'll be there. You know how to throw a party better than most. My man, I appreciate you. Love you, bro. Appreciate See, you, appreciate you. You. See you soon, all right? All right, thanks for checking the tape. No doubt. <laughs> of course, of course, always. The one and only, the one and only Kenny Smith right here. Coming up, I got a transition from that man to the former president of the United States. Making noise, making money. What else is he going to make happen? There's a lot to talk about. Stick around. You're watching the Stephen A. Smith Show right here over the Digital Airways with YouTube. Back with more in a minute. Welcome back to the Stephen A. Smith Show. Now it's time to get to some other topics before I get to my tweets and the calls to close out the show, okay? The former president is now hawking sneakers. Yes, that man, Donald Trump, the former president, appeared at SneakerCon a footwear convention for shoe aficionados and collectors in Philadelphia over the weekend, where he introduced his latest business venture, high top shoes and sneakers. <sighs> the shoes, called the Never Surrender High Tops, are not the first product the former president has hawked to his loyal base of followers. According to a website dedicated solely to Trump sneakers, the shoe line is quote unquote super limited only 1,000 pairs were being sold. The small print on the side notes that the shoes are not designed, manufactured, distributed, or sold by Trump or his organization, but rather by a company identified as 45 Footwear LLC, which uses Trump's name and likeness under a license agreement. The former president seemed to imply that the shoes were part of an effort to reach younger voters, saying, quote, We've got to get the young people out to vote. That's what he's saying. The announcement came a day after a judge in New York ordered Trump to pay more than $350 million in penalties, plus interest, following a civil suit, a civil fraud trial, I'm sorry, in which he was found to have carried out a years-long scheme to use false financial data to borrow money at lower rates alongside his adult sons and other top executives at the Trump Organization. Trump has promised to appeal the decision. The shoes are now selling on eBay for as much as $7,500. In comparison to some others, big baller brand sneakers on eBay, $500 to $1,000. Various styles of Jordan sell on eBay. Original Nike, original Air Jordan High Chicago, 1985. That sells for $72,000. Nike's Louis Vuitton Air Force One, low. That sold at $300,000. Let me move on by saying this to y'all. It's just the latest that Trump is going to do in terms of collecting dollars to help pay for his legal fees. There's no surprise there. But if y'all think this is not something to take serious, you need to pay attention. He's winning in the polls. You see the Democratic Party fracturing before your very eyes because some people are saying, Joe, keep running, Joe, keep running. Other people are saying he needs to step aside for the good of the country. He should have been a one-term president. He should have said, I'm just here for that, and then after that, I'm moving on because by the time we roll around for election in 2024, I'm going to be 82 years of age. I don't need to be thinking about four more years. 
And so now you got people talking about Kamala Harris. Now you got people talking about Gavin Newsom. Now you got people talking about it at the Democratic National Convention. That's when things are going to change and we might see a new candidate scheduled to go up against Trump. Despite, despite four indictments, 91 counts, the possibility that he could be a convicted felon on top of losing this civil suit. He's coming. He's coming. There's no way around it. You look at the immigration crisis, because it is a crisis. Make no mistake about it. People in this country are paying attention to that. They look at the economy. They're also looking at inflation. They're looking at the price of milk, the price of gas, the price of bread, going to the supermarket, complaining about that. These are the kind of things folks are talking about. And regardless of what we want to say, what we want to think, or what we want to feel, you have people on the left who have no problem with what's going on. You've got people on the right who's got a big time problem with what's going on. So it does come down to who's going to go to the polls. It does come down to numbers. Because at some point in time, ultimately, you don't have people even talking about Joe Biden's policies. What they're talking about is, yo, we're not inspired. And if they're not inspired, they're not going to go to the polls. You can talk about Obama all you want to. Obama, Obama got people to the polls. If you ain't for Trump and you go to the polls, you're going to vote against him. The question is, are you going to go to the polls? Trump is trying to galvanize people to go to the polls. He's telling you, I'm here to save the day. And over 74,000 people last election he lost voted for him to do just that. It's just that 80 million, I said 74,000 and 74 million, 80 million voted. Over 80 million voted for Joe Biden. Is another 80 plus million gonna show up to the polls? Forget who you're gonna vote for, because we know he got his support, Biden's gonna have his. Who's gonna show up to the polls? And that's why those sneakers, that line that Trump threw out there, makes sense. We gotta get young people to the polls. We gotta get young people to the polls. How much you wanna make a bet? Some young people's gonna go to the polls. Wearing those damn sneakers. Wearing those damn sneakers. These ones, are not my style. But there's a lot of people that are buy those. Trust me on that. And if he says, buy it to show up to the polls, wait till you see the numbers. Wait till you see the numbers. Now come on over here with me while I go and get into these tweets. Today's fan tweets are brought to you by our newest sponsor, SeatGeek, which is great. Because if I ever need to get myself some Beyonce tickets and I have to find a hot deal, there is no question I'm going right to SeatGeek. And let me tell you all why. With over 28 million downloads, SeatGeek is the number one rated ticketing app. There are more than 70,000 events on SeatGeek, including concerts, sporting events, festivals, and more. And that's why I'm excited to have a ticketing partner that helps the Stephen A. Smith Show. Listeners find tickets to all the best games and big-time performers like Jay-Z, John Legend, and the one and only Taylor Swift, okay? They put all the tickets across the web in one place to make sure you're getting the best deal on what you want to do and who you want to see. So go and download the SeatGeek app and use my code SAS for $20 off tickets at SeatGeek. That's right. You heard me. $20 off your first purchase with promo code SAS. Make sure you click the link in the description to download the app. Now, let's read some of my tweets here. Let's go. At Coach Sean Bell writes, is Dame Lillard the Dak Prescott at the NBA only puts up numbers when it doesn't matter? First of all, that's blasphemous. That's blasphemous right there. Don't you ever utter such disrespectful words out of your mouth again. Damian Lillard is the reigning two-time three-point shooting champion. Damian Lillard, okay, is one of the most lethal scorers and lethal closers in the history of the game. Dame time, Dame time. He says that for a reason. You understand what I'm saying? We ain't heard that from Dak. We ain't seen that from Dak. Last time I checked, even though he lost in the conference finals, Damian Lillard went to a conference finals. Has that happened for Dak Prescott? It has not. In eight-plus years in the league, the man has not been past the second round of the playoffs, hasn't been past the divisional playoff in the NFL. So don't you dare make that kind of comparison again. That is blasphemous. Blasphemous. Let's get to our next tweet right here. At Be More Like State, right, Stephen A., if you had to pick one person to help you out in a bar fight, you picking Bruce Lee or Batman? What? Of course I'm picking Bruce Lee. 
What's the matter with you? Enter the dragon? Are you killing me? Are you kidding me? Don't ever ask that question again. Batman, I respect him, but it's all about gimmicks. It's all about gadgets. That's what he is. A hard, heavy rubber suit. You know, got the cape that help him, you know, gravitate a little bit. Can bounce bullets off of the rubber and all of this other stuff. I get it. But there's nothing superhuman about Batman. Bruce Lee don't have to be. He's just so spectacular. You understand? There would have been no Jet Li if it wasn't for Bruce Lee. Shang-Chi! Remember that movie that came out? I forgot the actor's name in real life. But Shang-Chi! That's a bad brother, too. That's a good movie, by the way. But he's no Bruce Lee. Jim Kelly, Chuck Norris, boy, you didn't think I knew about people like that, right? But I did. But they weren't Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee, the truth. And a half. Of course, I would pick Bruce Lee over Batman. Now, if you said Superman, it would be Superman. Bruce Lee can't fly and bullets can't bounce off his chest. But Bruce Lee over Batman, all day, every day. Next up, what you got for me? At Sun Dog Nation writes, waffles, French toast, and pancakes. Rank them in order. Easy. French toast, waffles, pancakes. Okay? French toast, you basically just toast the bread, but it's nice and moist with nice butter and nice syrup. If it's right, it's delicious. Okay? Waffles are good, but they can mess it up if they make it too crunchy for me. I don't like hard waffles and, you know, you're cutting it and then it's just spreading all over the place and stuff like that because it's too hard. But I don't like it too soft either. I like it mildly toasted. You understand? And you do that with the waffles. Pancakes, everybody loves pancakes. But the problem is it bloats you more than the other stuff. So you'll walk around after eating it. You know? You know? I don't want that. I don't want that. Okay? French toast, waffles, Pancakes, in that order. Next up, what you got for me? At JJ Vikings. Okay. Look at this little kid right there. Stevie A love the kids. He sure does. He sure does. Dear Stephen A, I'm JJ Vikings, a young teenager whose dream is to become an NFL analyst for the Minnesota Vikings. I admire the work that you're doing. My question for you is, what is the best part for you about what you do? Well, it's doing what I love to do doing what I feel I was born to do. I loved sports. I loved giving commentary. I loved expressing my opinion. I loved writing. I loved articulating my thoughts, my opinions, my perspectives, my intel over the airwaves, whether it be radio or television. So all of those things come into play. Doing what I love to do makes it feel like it's not work. And as a result, no matter how many hours I'm called upon to, uh, to embrace the task at hand, it doesn't feel as arduous as it feels for somebody who's punching a clock and just doing the work every day to earn a salary, but they don't really love what they do. Here's my advice to you, young fella. And take this advice from Stephen A, because you're going to feel exactly what I say you feel. I don't care how much you love being an analyst for the Minnesota Vikings. It's not going to stop there. Eventually, you're going to want to call the great games. Let's say for the sake of argument, you want to do a Minnesota Vikings game, right? What if the Minnesota Vikings were 15 and 1, but the team they were playing was 1 and 15? But there was a game in Kansas City between Kansas City and Baltimore or Kansas City and San Francisco, and they were both 16 and 0. And the final game of the regular season, or it was a playoffs and it was Kansas City versus Baltimore, or if it was a superstar like Lamar Jackson versus Patrick Mahomes, or what if it was Patrick Mahomes against Dak Prescott, or what if it was Jordan Love or Matthew Stafford going up against Mahomes or Josh Allen or somebody and Minnesota's game wasn't as thrilling. You're not going to want to do just Minnesota. You're going to want to call the games that matter. So it's nice for you as a young whippersnapper to say that I want to become an NFL analyst for the Minnesota Vikings. But remember, that's just your start. The finish line is having your pick of the litter because you're so great, you're an A-team guy. And when you're an A-team guy, that means you go where the best action is. And that's what you want. Appreciate the call. Last tweet right here. Let's go to it. At PFT Gym, Stephen A, does a straw have one hole or two holes? It has one hole, period. 
Some people could say it's two because you got one at the top, one at the bottom. The reason I say it's one is because it's the same tunnel. That's what it is. You understand? So I don't view it as two holes. Some people could view it as two. They could do that. But to me, it's one. All right? Now let me get to the calls before I get on out of here for the day. Appreciate the love and support as always, y'all. Thank y'all so much. I'm enjoying doing this show today. Let's get right to the calls right here at 888-SAS-5303. That's 888-727-5303. Let's go to Hassan in New York. You're live with Stephen A. What's up, Hassan? How are you? Hassan, are you there? Stephen A. Smith, what's up, man? What's up? Talk to me. How are you? Good, good. Listen, man, when is Luka and Jokic, when are they going to just team up, man? I've never seen Jokic have so much fun playing basketball aside from last night. I think the league is cooked when they meet up and just join a team. What do you think about that? Well, first of all, it would be nice, but it's really why does Jokic need Luka? He's the reigning defending NBA champion. When he and Jamal Murray are in the lineup together this year, they were 28 and 11. When they're not in the lineup together, they're 8 and 8 team, a 500 team. They're the reigning defending NBA champions. When they were struggling years ago, that was when Jamal Murray had his injury and he was compromised for two full seasons. And as a result, Denver was compromised as well because without him, Jokic just ain't the same. When I look at Jamal Murray and I look at Jokic, I say to myself, they are spectacular. They're special together. Jokic with Luka would be phenomenal in certain respects, but remember, Luka needs the ball, and Luka holds on to the ball a bit much. With Murray, Murray passes it or he shoots it, and his decisions are relatively quick. That's not Luka's game, so I would say to you, be careful what you wish for because when you look at Denver, they're already winning without Luka, Okay. Denver doesn't right. need Denver. Well, that, Denver doesn't need Luca, right and Jokic doesn't need Luca. Luca needs them. Then sometimes it looks like Jokic isn't having fun out there. Oh, stop it! That's, 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 that's yo. That's ignorant. What do you mean he doesn't look like he's having fun? He's one. He's the champion. What do you want him to look like? What do you? What, what is the champion supposed to look like? He's the he's the reigning defending champion. So who cares how he looks? He's winning. He's winning. Oh. That's all that matters. It's not a beauty contest. It's a basketball contest. Remember that. <laughs> Got to get out of here. Take care. Jack, you're live with Stephen A. Jack from Tucson, Arizona. What's up, Jack? How are you? I'm pretty good. How are you, Stephen I'm A? I'm good, man. Talk to me. What's up? Uh, do you think that um, Steph Curry is clearly the best point guard of all time? Because that is my professional opinion. But I know a lot of other people um, – Still think it's Magic Johnson. Well, here's the deal. Let me explain to you what the deal is. First of all, it's a legitimate question that you're asking. I'm not going to dis summarily dismiss it as if it's an ignorant question. It is not. What I would say to you is that they're both so great, him and Magic Johnson, that it has to be contextualized properly. If you're talking quintessential point guard, which is someone who facilitates opportunities for others, then it is clearly Irvin Magic Johnson. 6'9", you know, the fast break, his distribution of the basketball, it's to Worthy on one wing, it's to Byron Scott on another, it's to Cooper trailing, the offense slows up, it's getting the ball to Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, it's finishing at the basket himself, it's the no-look passes, it's all of that. It's clearly Irving Magic Johnson. If you're talking about the quintessential point guard who is a distributor. However, if you are talking about impact, one could argue it is Steph Curry. Because Steph Curry, the moment he gets past half court, he's a threat because he could pull up from 40 or 50 and make it like he's hit the free throw. He's that lethal of a, of a marksman. He is the greatest shooter we have ever seen. And because that's the reality, you have to look at it from impact. I think about impact and I say you got to have your head on a swivel when dealing with Steph Curry. So wherever he is on a court, because you have to fear what he brings to the table, it frees up opportunities for others, which is an indirect way of contributing and facilitating opportunities for others. Whereas Magic Johnson more directly facilitates opportunities for others because he's literally getting them the ball. 
So that's how I would look at it. That is the only way to answer that question. There is no other way to definitively answer the question. You have to pick your poison. Do you want somebody that literally feeds you the basketball, or do you want somebody that is such a threat offensively because of his ability to shoot the ball that everybody's head is on a swivel because of him, and you can get freed up because they ain't watching you, they're watching him. Whichever way you want to go, as long as you provide that explanation, I think you're safe. All right, thank you very much, Stephen A. Uh, this is a little bit of a follow-up. Do you think Steph Curry has been the best player far and away in the NBA since 2015? No, he hasn't. I think there have been times when Giannis Antetokounmpo, uh, when Kevin Durant and LeBron James have given him a run for his money. And, by the way, a healthy Kawhi Leonard, by the way. But that's rare. Appreciate the call. Tyler in San Diego, you're live with Stephen A. You're the last caller. What's up? What's going on, Stephen A? First of all, you know, you're a rock star and a real journalist that I really respect. And, you know, some of these journalists who I won't name, they don't really respect the L.A. Clippers as the best team in basketball. Mm -hmm. But they're also coming out here saying that, you know, these all-star players need a million dollars to play in the all-star game. So it's not really like a glorified layup line. My thing is, when you look at that 2020 game, you see its competitiveness, you see the Elam ending. And then you see last night, I just think the game needs to be changed. The court's too slippery, the broadcasters don't care about the game, and the format is just a little bit off. I wanted to ask you, what do you think needs to change about the game and about the All-Star game in, in general future? I think that ultimately it comes down to a player's willingness to care. I don't think there's anything wrong with the rules of the game, the way the game is called or whatever. I just think that the players are getting paid so much money uh, far too many of them have basically given the league the finger and said, to hell with y'all. We're going to do what we want to do the way we want to do it. Y'all prioritize these back-to-backs. Y'all put us in a position where we got to do this or that or whatever. And you know what? We got a lot going on physically throughout the season. And in the end, we're really, really held accountable for what transpires beyond, beyond April. And as a result of that, they don't prioritize what they should prioritize, which is everything. As far as I'm concerned, you're getting off four to six months out of the year. Most teams are off six months out of the year. The elite teams are off at least four months out of the year. OK, if you're healthy, play. If you're not, you don't. I understand that. But if you're going to show up to All-Star Weekend, show up and play. Don't show up and snub your nose at the game and in the faces of fans everywhere by not competing. You don't do that. Just don't show up. Don't play. Rather than show up and just let people run up and down the court and have a glorified flag basketball game. That makes no sense whatsoever. It's an insult to the game, and I think that that's what the players have done, and I think they, have, they, should, they, they are accountable for it. The people who paved the way for them to get this money, to get this prestige, et cetera, et cetera, never did this. So they shouldn't. That's where I stand with it. Did you watch the full game last night, Stephen A? No, I didn't watch the full game last night. I haven't watched a full NBA All-Star game in a decade. Because it's been I don't know what they can do to get that. you back. No, I don't know what they can either. I told you what they can do with the slam dunk contest. I have a nationwide contest. That's what they should do. In terms of the actual All-Star game itself, just compete with each other. Compete to the level that you compete when you're playing in the summer at Loyola Marymount or UCLA or whatever. Compete on that level. Get in a good workout. You understand? Get in, don't, don't, don't just show up to put in some cardio. Don't just show up and, and act like everybody should be grateful that you're there. You wouldn't be what you are if it wasn't for the fans. And this is the crime. You know what the biggest crime about it is? Don't you remember what it was like just three years ago when you were playing in the bubble and there were no fans? When you had to play in empty gymnasiums and people were digitized, you know, they're virtually watching you on, on their home, on their iPads and their laptops and all of this other stuff because of COVID and nobody was allowed to be in attendance. How could you endure that period of time, recognizing how valuable it was for the fans to be in attendance, but still treat this with the level of apathy and indifference that you've been treating it with? It's a travesty. And to do it on the eve of the NBA trying to negotiate a new deal with the networks and what have you, my God, what insensitivity. But that's what they've been doing, and it needs to change. I got to get on out of here, my man. I appreciate the call. Thank you so much, all right? That's it for this week's. That's, we, that's it. I appreciate the call, man. Thank you so much. That's it for this edition of the Stephen A. Smith Show. Got to get on out of here. Thank you all for joining me. I'll be back in a couple of days or so. Never forget that. 
okay? And don't forget to call in, 888-SAS-5303. That's 888-727-5303 with your tweets, with your calls, et cetera, et cetera. Appreciate the love. Keep it coming, and I'm going to keep on coming, okay? We're growing by the thousands each and every single day. That's not possible if it were not for you. So I thank you from the bottom of my heart, and I'm going to keep it coming. Until next time, everybody, this is Stephen A. signing off. Peace and love.